<laughs> wow, finally a new Ad Astra episode! And this took much longer than it should have. Ruff, ruff, ruff. Hey guys, it's your boy Borudago, and welcome back to Ad Astra episode 18. Uh, I'm sorry that this episode has taken so long to come out. It would have come out earlier if it didn't turn out that I had this camera plugged into my computer. And for that reason, the whole computer thought like, this is a microphone now. So it recorded, I recorded this whole episode with that microphone and the audio was shit. I was like, no, I, I can't even try to fix this audio. I have to re-record the whole episode because this audio is garbage. So due to that, instead of editing the video, I have to re-record it and I probably won't be able to upload it till the weekend that uh, probably this, the past weekend that was. Also, there's been, it's been summertime, so I have a lot of stuff to do with friends and family, uh, visiting, having people visiting and uh, enjoying summer and time of work. So that's also where there, there's been a big delay in videos. But uh, we should get back on track. We should be back on track soon enough uh, with the last videos. Also, another angle. I'm just trying out this angle. Uh, I think it will be better because this episode uh, I will record without suit. I tried, as I said, I already recorded this episode once and I'm re-recording it now. And uh, I recorded the video faster because it was easier to read. So uh, I'm gonna do that in this time as well, record. For your liking, I won't uh, keep my face up in the corner for the video. Only when I talk about stuff that happens or theorize and stuff or react, then I will show my face. Otherwise, uh, you will only hear my voice. Yeah, so with no further ado, let's go. And I hope you enjoy <laughs> Okay, a quick recap. Last episode, we followed Alex to the little island uh, with Nefero, and we found out that ne Alex is a spy for Omophora. Uh, but what that means, we still don't know really. And after that, uh, we went, when we came back to the palace, and we found Cassius high as a kite on Somni, and uh, trying to talk to the parents. And we got high as well. We hallucinated and was in contact with the monitor um, who spoke for the parents. And we learned that this is all according to the parents' plan so far that we are here. And the parents want Amicus to become the emperor. So we have the parents on our side. And after that, we went here to Amicus to tell him about what happened. And as we were about to tell him of what happened with the parents, we end the episode. So now we're gonna continue and see what happens next. Amicus leans down, pressing his nose against my hair and inhaling deeply. It's about the parents, I think. I need to talk to you about something they showed me. The snuffling of my hair pauses as Amicus absorbs what I just said. The parents? Yeah. The parents? I sigh, wondering if I'm going to have as much trouble convincing Amicus of this as I did with everyone else. I still remember the look Nefero gave me when I told him about the drug trip I had. Amicus seems to sense my frustration and hugs me a little tighter. Hey, I'm just surprised. I believe you. I have no reason not to. He nusses my head again. Did they come to you in a dream or...? Sort of. I tell Amicus what happened in the hallway in front of the meditation room. What?! I push through his shocked exclamations and go on to describe the dreams I'm having as well. What?! But why wouldn't you be telling me this? I shrug against his body. I forgot about him as soon as I woke up. I didn't remember until after what happened with Cassius. Well... I feel Amicus' chest puff off with pride. Sounds like I really am meant to be the Emperor, huh? That's what I said, but you know what else this means? Hmm? The monitors know that I'm here, and they're okay with it, so I guess it's not really even illegal, right? There's a pause. I mean, it may have been just a dream, but it's nice to hear, nevertheless. And also, stay away from that room. While I find it funny that Cassius is using Somni to make contact, I'd rather you not use it. Amicus kisses the top of my head and lets out a sigh of exasperation. I didn't do it on purpose. And you said you believed me. Amicus lets out a chuckle that rumbles through his torso and into my back. It's a comforting feeling, and despite my annoyance, I find myself pressing deeper against him. I believe that you saw these things, but who can say if it was real or not? Sometimes I have dreams of entities that I believe are the parents, but I don't necessarily believe that it actually is them. 
I'm quiet for a moment, letting the silence drag out and I know Ambicus well enough at this point that I know that he got his ears pointed up, waiting for me to respond. Trust me, like seriously, you need to trust me on this Ambicus. Ambicus spends his own moment being quiet, resting his cheek against my head, contemplating. Do you trust me? There's only a short pause. Alright, yes, I do trust you. There's a sense of conviction in his voice and I can tell that he really is determined to believe me. Thank you, but I only say that because of something else that happened. And what was that? I take a deep breath. Amicus, sensing my anxiety, suddenly turns me in his lap to face him, letting me lay my head against his chest as he pets the side of my face. Hey, you can tell me anything, Bo. Like I said, I believe you. He says it even more firmly this time, tipping his muscle down to look at me as I look up at him, meeting eyes. Alright, so I was in the archives with Virginia yesterday. Ambicus's eyes widen. The archives? What were you doing there? This reminds me that I also need to tell Ambicus of what we've been plotting this past week. I'll tell you in a bit, but something happened when I was, um, hooked up to the machine. Y you connected with it? Why would... In a bit. Anyway, I was hooked up and I had another vision from the parents. Ambicus thinks. Well, I suppose that would make more sense, considering that that's the way the Emperor speaks with them. But it's only the Emperor they speak to. Yeah, well, for whatever reason they started talking to me. Actually, you started talking to me. Me? I, I think so. You were like, yelling, telling me that you didn't want me to leave you. <laughs> oh, well, that does sound like something I would say in such a situation. But you sounded really scared and sad, and I felt like I couldn't breathe. My throat hurt and it just felt weird. Amicus seems to contemplate all of this, but doesn't say anything more. I start to get frustrated, but I realize that I can't really expect him to offer more information that I don't already know. I guess I had hoped that he would have more insight into why the parents do things the way that they do. But really, I'm on my own figuring all of this out. I sigh and lean my head against the wolf's chest. Hey, what's wrong? I'm sure you'll be fine. The parents are very mysterious. Even my father had several visions he had trouble interpreting. I just... Uh, I feel like something bad is going to happen. Like, really bad. And I don't know what it is that I should do to stop it. Did they give you any guidance at all? They, they said to follow the cat. <laughs> well, they just said to give in to the benevolent will or something like that. Ambicus gently pushes me back so that he can look at me directly before he smiles gently. <laughs> well, there's your answer. The parents only want what is best for all of us. Just follow the guidance, keep your mind and heart open to them, and all will turn out as it should. Those sentences wouldn't be out of place during the ceremony in a church on earth, and I'm reminded again that these parents really are seen as gods. It's a comforting thought that I could just do as they say and just be fine, made all more comforting by Amico's smile and confidence in the matter. But there is a nagging feeling in the back of my mind, that there's something more to the parents than the wolf seems to know. I just... I just don't know if I can trust them. Amicus laughs, and that actually does annoy me. Hey, I'm serious. There's something off about all of this. Like, the way going about things. If they want me to do something, then they should tell me instead of showing me scary visions. Amicus forces himself to stop laughing and clears his throat, trying to look serious. I'm sorry, Bo. I just sometimes forget that you're outside the galaxies and aren't accustomed to these things. The parents are nothing but benevolence and goodwill. We all feel their guidance in our lives even if we're not able to speak to them directly like the Emperor. The fact that you are able to do so is an incredible honor, and you should be happy, not worried. Amicus strokes my hair. Yeah, but you don't think me being an outsider gives me a different perspective on all this? What if they aren't what they say they are? They are, and have no reason not to be. Amicus' voice becomes more firm, and I can tell that he's starting to become uncomfortable with my questions. My advice to you? Listen to them. They will help you, and maybe even figure out a way to get us out of this mess. Besides, it's a great relief to know that you're here for a reason. I'm even starting to think that I was meant to find you. Amicus hugs me again. I decide not to press further. I love and trust Amicus, but he's clearly on board with anything to do with the parents, and I doubt that I'd be able to make him question that. Not that I really want to anyway, I'm just worried that I'm being led down a path that I really don't want to go down. Oh, Bo. 
Amicus, clearly sensing my continuing anxiety, pulls me forward to kiss me. I kiss back and it feels good even though my stomach continues to churn. 10 minutes remaining, Bo! Com uses his loud voice to call down to us from the top of the ladder. Amicus and I sigh in unified frustration. Um, so wanna have a little fun before you go? I look down and I'm kind of amazed to see that he still has a boner, which makes me wonder how much he'd really been engaged in our conversation. I have to tell you about... I catch myself and lower my voice. What we've been doing to get you out. You can do that and do other things at the same time. <laughs> it's so horny, I can't. <laughs> Amicus tries not to look too eager. I roll my eyes, but press my hands against his chest and draws it slowly down the wall's front, over the curve of his stomach. He immediately moans quietly as I reach the lower part of his abdomen, and I can see the bulge jump in his underwear as his hips even thrust up a bit too. I laugh at his eagerness, and I have to admit that it's kind of nice to have something more light-hearted to do while I discuss all of these troubling issues with my wolf. I find it so cute that he always calls him my wolf. That's adorable. Oh. For the next little while, I walk around the gardens, taking advantage of the mild weather. I've noticed it's become cooler and less humid over the past week, which is nice. Apparently this is as cold as it gets in this pause in Adastra though, and it never snows. I sigh and sit on a bench, thinking back to my meeting with Amicus just an hour ago. It had been easier to say goodbye to the wolf this time, especially now that I know Cassius is willing to let us see each other as much as possible. That being whenever Kato is out, which is good, because he's gone a lot of the time doing his official business or whatever. Amicus once again had recommended I distance myself from the plotting so as not to get caught up if we get exposed. I reassure him, even though I know that I'm going to do whatever it takes to see this through, even if that means that I will have to put myself in danger. I don't want Amicus to be down there for another day. Just yesterday Cassius, or Kato, banned all talk of Amicus and Adastra, which Neferi told me only caused the rumors to really start flying. They range from Amicus being imprisoned, true, banished, or even executed. This is good for us, I'm told, because the public, whether they like Amicus or not, generally doesn't feel like he should be struck from existence just because he lost the Emperorship. In other words, the people will likely be on our side when we finally reveal everything. Hopefully. That's really all we can rely on, considering the Emperor holds so much power, even if the way it was achieved was illegitimate. The Triumvirates barely check the Emperor's power, so unless the people as a whole come together, it would be difficult to remove Cassius from the throne. If Cassius still refuses to step down, our options will be very limited, and most probably won't turn out well for me, or anyone else that is not part of the family. Still, Cassius is proud. Very proud. Neferi and Virginia think that he will either step down, or at least accept combat to go out with honor. Hopefully the first, because I really don't know how Amicus would deal with the idea of having to kill his brother. I sigh and lean back on the bench, really getting frustrated with all of this political bullshit. This had been the exact type of thing Cassius wanted to get rid of, but now it just seems worse than ever. Just as I'm thinking this, I see Alex. He's just up the path, standing right in the middle of it. And he's looking right at me. I give a start, then just stare back at him. He doesn't move and just goes on looking at me, and I start to wonder what the hell he's doing. He doesn't have his usual smile on either, and as a soft breeze blows through the leaves and foliage, I start to feel like I'm in some kind of horror movie. Actually, now that I know who he really is, I do start to feel a little concerned about what he's capable of. So I decide to act casual and stand up, raising a hand and walking over to the cat. Hey Alex! Alexius will do, Bo. Um, okay. Hi Alexius. I'll tip it with you, Bo. What? I feel things should be more formal between us from now on. That is all. No, I mean, why that greeting? I'd heard Neferi use it many times, but no one else. You are a Kimian, are you not? That gives me a pause. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I guess I am. The cat smirks. <laughs> Odd, you seem to have forgotten your own citizenship. I shrug. Still getting used to it. I mean, it's something that even some siblings desire, not to mention children, or even the uncontacted. I raise an eyebrow. That's so. Certainly, who wouldn't want to be part of the most spoiled civilization in the galaxy? I sigh, still tired from thinking about all of this political maneuvering. 
Playing games with Alexius is the last thing that I want to do right now. Cut the bullshit, Alex. What do you want? E excuse me? I walked past the cat, listening to him sputtering in surprise. J -j you have some nerves talking to a sibling like that! I frowned, glancing back. And what's that supposed to mean? You're... You're not even a child, and yet you throw your weight around here like you're the most important person in the palace. I laugh, loud. LOL. I see the cat's ears pin back. Are you fucking kidding me? All of you assholes have been throwing me around with all your plots and fake niceties. I'm just trying to survive. Also, last I checked, Kimias are all equal, so I don't really give a shit if you're a sibling. Alex looks completely taken aback, which is completely satisfying. And haven't you always implied that the wolves are fucked up for looking down at the children and treating them like slaves? Alex coughs to clear his throat. My apologies, I, I simply lost my temper for a moment. You were just being a bit rude. Or maybe deep down you're just as speciesist or whatever as the wolves, even though you try to pretend you're not. Neferi is the same way. Even I'm surprised myself a little. It's like the lead has finally blown off and I'm just using Alex to vent all of my frustrations with this place. What has gotten into you, Bo? There's a long pause and I finally sigh, rubbing my face. Sorry, I'm just... I think I'm losing my mind here. For the first time in a while, the cat cracks a genuine smile. I can tell that you're not meant to be a diplomat. <laughs> Definitely not. For a moment, I feel that all the familiar kinship I had with the cat not even a few weeks ago, I want that to come back because I want these two to be friends. I don't want them to be enemies or whatever or spies and uh, uh, I just want them to be buddies. I want to take Alex home. <laughs> I do believe that in any other situation, in one where we are not all spies, Alex and I could have been really good friends. I know that can't be the case now though, so I stop smiling and look Alexius right in the eye. But seriously, what do you want? I can tell that you're trying to get something out of me. Alex becomes serious too, smile fading. He considers me for a long while, probably realizing that I'm not going to play his little game. Alright Bo, who are you? I know you're not an abandoned child. What is it that you want and what are you doing here? So you want to know everything? Yes. And why should I tell you? Alex smirks. <laughs> why be blunt if we're going to play the game anyway, Bo? I'm just curious as to why you are so curious. I hardly matter in all of this. That is a complete lie. Everything has changed since you arrived, and this is why I want to know. But why does it matter that you know? I am an important link between Omophora and Adastra. It is my job to know what is happening in this empire. Uh-huh. So who told you that I'm uncontacted? Cassius? You've deduced correctly, but I also know that the monitor seems to approve of it. Which is rather odd. I shrug. Again, I don't know what is going on. Anyway, I don't see whether I would tell you anything if I don't know anything about you. <laughs> Why? I'm just a simple pet. I don't know anything that's going on. His tone of voice tells me that he's mocking me. I raise an eyebrow, but just doesn't say anything. Alex sighs. The simplest way that I can explain is that I'm trying to maintain peace in the galaxies as a whole. That mainly involves watching the motives of the wolves. Why is that? Because they can be dangerous. Okay, are none of the other siblings dangerous? Bo, Ad Astra is the only civilization in the galaxy to wage war on other siblings in over 10 millennia, and they were the perpetrators in the previous war as well. Not only that, but they wage war on an almost parent level civilization. They're suicidal, and I can't imagine why the Kimias would want an alliance with them. I think. This seems to go against what Alex would want. I thought he wanted Amicus to take the throne. Do you... Uh, not want the alliance to happen? I want the Galaxies to remain safe. Is the alliance something you want to happen? I frown, wondering why he's asking me. I mean, to me it seems that it would create peace, so yeah. Alex's eyes narrows, like he's figured something out. What? Do you want the wolves to stay isolated? Is it maybe that he wants um, Cassius to be the emperor so that they can not be in contact with the parents and therefore they can't use the parent tech and stuff and can't wage war without like spaceship and stuff? 
I just want order. The wolves have none of that. The silence stretches out between us. I suppose you're still not going to tell me anything about yourself then? I never said I would, and there really isn't much to tell. How about this? How did you secure a Kimian citizenship? That is not something that is given out to children who are presumed to belong to wolves. The question takes me by surprise, though the whole Kimian thing does seem to be what's bothering him, especially after his greeting. I think, but the truth doesn't seem harmful here. Honestly, it was just to protect me from Cassius. He doesn't really like me if you haven't noticed. The expression on Alex's face tells me that he definitely doesn't believe me. Cassius wouldn't harm you unless you did something that deserved it. He said he wanted to execute me because I backtalked him and Amicus slapped his nose. Alex's ears flatten. Cassius says things. He's very passionate. That's one way to put it. I shift on my feet, starting to get tired of this conversation. Listen, Alex, I have nothing against you. I'm just trying to get through this as much as you are. Nefero gave you the citizenship, right? Uh, yeah. And you're working with him to make the alliance a reality, correct? That stops me. What? No! No, I'm focused on Amicus right now. Alex glares. Which is still part of the alliance. I guess so, but honestly, that's not really my top priority right now. It's part of your top priority. I'm getting frustrated and starting to sidle off towards the palace. Yeah, we established that. Listen, I'm gonna lay down. I'm tired. Alex goes on staring and doesn't say anything. Again, I have nothing against you. I hope that we can just um, go back to normal in the future once this is all over, you know? I want that as well, please. <laughs> Indeed. And with that, Alex turns and walks away up the path, leaving me to stare after him. I decide to ask Nefero about what happened with Alex. I know they have some kind of relationship going on, so maybe he can enlighten me on the cat's motives. My mouth is already open as I'm walking into the bedroom when I'm hit with a blast of sound. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is great. Dance, Nefero, yeah. In front of me is Nefero with his back to me, though I can see that he is in his underwear. He's moving fluidly around, arms and paws waving about and pausing in odd angles while his feet slide across the ground, gliding back and forth. At first, I think he's doing some kind of exercise, but then I can hear him singing over the music. It's wordless because it doesn't translate through the lingua, just a sort of howling sound, though very different from the wolves. It's very loud and it's a wonder that I couldn't hear it in the hallway. It doesn't necessarily sound bad, but I can tell him that Fairy isn't putting much effort into making it sound nice. Still, I feel like I'm walking into something private, so I consider him backing out. And of course, that's when he spins around and immediately spots me, standing there in front of the door, my mouth still open. Quickly, I fix my face in a pleasant smile, trying to act casual so I don't embarrass him. Oh, hey, Nefero, I was... I pause as I see Nefero grinning back at me. Um, I was just, uh, uh, are you okay? I have to almost shout over the music. The jackal is swaying back and forth a little bit, almost like he's still dancing. Oh, boy, what an incredible, pleasant, joyous surprise! Uh, thanks? The jackal begins to dance again, facing me this time, though he doesn't sing, thankfully. Are you okay? Better than I ever been, my Simeon friend. What do you think of the music? Neferu nods at the ceiling. It's, uh, it's nice. Kinda loud? Oh, I'm sorry, I need to hear the sounds from home every now and then. The wolves have no uh, <laughs> spice in their music. The jackal slides his paw sensually over his torso to better accentuate his pecs and abs, his eyes glued to mine. I look around and note the three bottles of wine on the bedside table. Oh, you're drunk. <laughs> I'm drunk. <laughs> Nefero spins in a circle and actually almost loses his balance. Something I've never seen him do. I've seen him bust before, but he's always managed to keep his composure. But now? How drunk? Too drunk! <laughs> but... Nefero steadies himself against the pillar, leaning and rubbing his head against it. At the same time, not drunk enough. I quickly make sure that the door is closed behind me before moving closer to the jackal. Do you need help? What? I raise my voice above the music. Do you? Nefero waves his paw at me. 
Wait, calm, pause music. Pausing Dancing Among the Dunes by Hecate. I need another drink. Neferi reaches out towards the table, even though it's a good 10 feet away, and look over to see that one of them is half full. There's a pause, then the Neferi opens his eyes, frowning at me. I said I need a drink, Bo. And what do you think I'm gonna do about that? You're a slave, you know what to do. I stare. Excuse me? You are a slave. Neferi pokes his finger in my direction with every word. Don't let the wolves tell you any different. As long as you are here, they are your master. But you were treating me like a slave just now. I was making... I was making a point, clearly. Sorry, should I simplify my words for you? The jackal goes on, staring at the bottle, as if wondering if it were to take the journey there. He turns back to me, as if just remembering that I'm there, though he seems to have trouble focusing his eyes. Don't worry, Bo. I am just as much a slave as you are. You had the advantage of one day leaving, though. I move closer, deciding to sit on my bed while Neferu goes on hugging the pillar, as if letting go will cause him to fall. That wouldn't be good, considering that the fountain is right there. You can't leave whenever you want? Neferu chuckles, then guffaws. Another sound I never heard from him. Oh, you don't understand! <laughs> I can leave, but I can't. Can't leave. Yeah, I don't think I understand. Suddenly, the first ears flatten. You really fucked this up for me. Do you understand that? I blink. What? You fucked my life. What the hell are you talking about? If you hadn't come here, Akata wouldn't have the excuse to nullify Ambika's emperorship, and I would have been halfway through negotiating an alliance by now. <laughs> Wait, this isn't my fault. I was brought here against my will, Neferu. Neferu makes another deep swallowing sound, and then just belches loudly. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. I forget that it's mostly that big idiot's fault. I feel my temper snap, and I stand up. Now is not the time that I want to find out that my most important ally actually blames me and my boyfriend for the situation he's in. I love that he's calling him and because he's boyfriend, that is so cute. Have you done that before? They said that they're dating, but damn. So cute. Oh, I can't. Hey, I know you're drunk, but I'm not gonna stand here and listen to you say this shit. You can just call me back when you're sobered up and stop feeling sorry for yourself. I start walking towards the door quickly, feeling a little sick at the whole situation. If Neferu is really turning on me, that means that the only person that I can trust here is in the dungeon. I really would be alone. Wait. His voice is so quiet that I'm almost not even sure I heard it. I paused though, looking back over my shoulder. He still leaned up against the pillar, his ears down, gazing at the ground. I'm about to ask him to repeat himself, but that's when he suddenly lets out the gasp and slides down the pillar to his knees. He crumples on the ground, paws covering his face as he trembles and starts to sob loudly. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't know what I'm, what I'm doing. I stare, open mouth, watching the jackal cry for several seconds. Apparently, too drunk means way too drunk. Still, this jackal clearly has a lot of problems that he doesn't tell anyone about. Actually, he doesn't really have anyone to tell him to on this alien moon. At least I have Amicus. So after standing there in stunned silence for a moment, I walk over to Neferu. I stand awkwardly at his side for a moment, watching his broad black furred shoulders heave up and down before I kneel and rest a hand on his back. I see his ears perk up for a moment in reaction, but otherwise he doesn't say anything. I'm generally not the best at comforting someone, especially when they're crying but I rub my hand in a circle through the fur. Hey, I get it. This whole thing is really frustrating, but we'll figure this out together. I give the jackal a few minutes to finally calm down, and then I start to pull him up, pushing him in the direction of his bed. He doesn't resist, and stumbles to it before falling face down onto the covers. He wipes his face with the pillow, and while he does that, I quickly grab the wine bottles, moving them to the floor so that they are out of its reach. Finally, the fairy lets out a big shuddery sigh. <laughs> Can you rub my back again? It feels good. The jackal's voice is stuffy from the clogged noise. Sure. 
I kneel beside the bed before starting to rub Nefer's back again. He sighs, head turned away from me. I let the silence go on for a while, listen to the jackal sniffling every couple of seconds before I finally speak. So, um, what happened? I drank. Yeah, and speaking of which, come, bring us a glass and a pitcher of water, please. Yes, Bo. And, uh, take the wine bottles away too. Yes, Bo. <laughs> no, my precious woven wine. Neferi says it in a mock sad voice, but combined with his already sad state, there is not much of a difference. Again, what happened? I don't know. I suppose I realize how challenging this will all be. I can't say I trust the Wolven people to oust Cassius. They're rather accepting of corrupt officials. I think, trying to approach this delicately. Is your family making you do this? Like, they won't let you back unless you cultivate alliance? <laughs> oh no, my family doesn't even expect me to accomplish that. But that's why I must do it. If I don't, I might as well get banished. It seems kind of unfair that they put all of this on you. At what I put them through? It's only fair. I wait for more of an explanation, but it doesn't go on. So, is what Alex said on the island about you and your family true? More or less. Again, he doesn't seem interested in talking about it, so I just go on rubbing his back. Well, we are gonna get Amicus out of the dungeons and onto the throne. I know you don't believe that I talk to the parents, but I really think I have, and they are on our side. The pharaoh chuckles. So you'll get that alliance. I hope so, my friend. We sit in silence for a long while, and even I start to enjoy the hypnotic motion of rubbing the pharaoh's furry back in a large spire motion. My mind wanders back to the cat. Speaking of Alex, I had a weird conversation with him today. I think he thinks we're like, um, conspiring against him or something. Nefero grunts. <laughs> Stay away from the cat. He's nothing but trouble. Well, he kept on bringing up the alliance. He seems to want to know my role in it. Nefero turns to face me, his eyes bloodshot, but the tears dried up at this point. I assume it had something to do with not wanting the alliance to happen? Yeah. Neferi takes a deep breath and presses his face into the pillow, letting out a long groan. All I can say is that I don't trust him. Yeah, definitely not. I just don't really get what he's doing. Neither do I, and that's why you should stay away from him. R really? I thought you two, uh, I don't know, talked and did stuff together? Which didn't shed any light on his motives. Considering the way that our relationship has changed, I doubt that I'll get any more information from him. Sure you can seduce him again? Nefero crackles a smile. <laughs> well, last time I tried that, uh, he referred to me as a whore. Which isn't exactly inaccurate. The door opens and the drone glides in, setting the water down on the bedside table and fetching the bottles behind the jackal's bed. Nefero watches it go morosely. I clear my throat trying to distract him from the departing alcohol. I get what you mean though, it seems like he favors one side and then the other. I don't get it. Nefero waves his paw. Best not worry yourself with him and simply stay away. Omophorans are famous for their quickly and seemingly contradictive behavior. Alright. I rope for a while longer, switching hand as my arm starts getting tired. I'm starting to think that the jackal has fallen asleep when he suddenly speaks again, jolting me out of my trance. We will be revealing our hand to Cassius tomorrow. With any luck, Amicus will be free by the end of the week. Uh, oh! I'm surprised, finding that hard to take in. I knew this would be coming, but not so soon. How are we gonna do that? Well, we have three pieces of information that can help us. The first is the footage from the third trial. Hopefully, that will be enough to convince Cassius to step down. Neferi suddenly shifts and slowly sits up, groaning again before reaching for the pitcher and glass of water. The second is the footage of Kato attacking me. I'd rather not have to use that, but if Cassius isn't convinced by the first, then we may have to resort to it. Neferi drinks deeply from his glass, and I watch him impatiently as he drains the entire thing. And the third? Neferi gasps and leans back, setting the glass down. Remember your little theory about the previous Empire's accident? I nod. Alex said that the investigation was botched. Nefero glances at me. The fact that the cat tipped you off is worrying. But it is very odd. The investigation wasn't botched. 
but rather called off by the acting emperor. Kato? Indeed, the investigators were only able to get as far as discovering a possible malicious software installed on the ship's navigation system. Considering the software has been installed through a port and that the ship is heavily protected whenever outside the palace, the installation will likely would have happened while inside the palace. So Kato. The Pharaoh chuckles. <laughs> More than likely, yes, but I don't understand why. Kato was a good friend with the last emperor, and as far as I can tell, he was supportive of his policies. Well, how people act on the outside doesn't really seem to matter much around here. Or anywhere. What convinced me of Kato's involvement, however, is the fact that every single investigator has gone missing since. What? Mm hmm. I start to feel that icy fear in my chest again. If it's Kato, then it really is ruthless. What I saw happen to that doctor, Felix, could only be a taste of what Kato is capable of. Unfortunately, because there is no solid evidence linking Kato, I'm afraid it might not be very effective. It could be another last resort though. Anyway, would you like to go with Virginia to try to convince him with this information? Really? You've been trying to get me to stay out of the way for this past week. To keep you safe. But I've noticed that Cassius may have taken a liking to you as of late. You know him to some degree and could use that knowledge to better convince him. Well, I wouldn't say that he likes me, but yeah, I can try. And as I said, Virginia will be there to help as well. I assume you're not going to? Nefarious marks. I am the last person he would want to discuss the possible end of his rule. And besides, I know I'm not going to feel my best tomorrow. I think I'll be staying in bed for once. Drink more water. The ferris sighs, just sort of looking at the pitcher. I roll my eyes, reaching out to pour him another glass. Oh, how kind of you! I'm a slave, right? The ferris winches as he takes the glass from me. No, you're a Kimian, and I think we'd be very proud to have you. And with that, he once again downs the entire thing. Okay! I did it, that was how long I recorded last time. Next episode we will go and talk to Cassius with Virginia and uh, hopefully get Amicus out of the prison. Whoa! This episode was very different from the past ones. Let me know what you thought about this. To me, this is so much easier to record like this um, because I like doing the fursuit, doing uh, things with this boy here. But it gets so warm, especially now during summer, and I, ha I have got a hard. It's been harder to read with the suit on. I don't know why. If it's like which eye I'm reading with, because I'm not reading with my dominant eye when I when I can basically only see through one eye, or that my vision is just lesser when I have the suit on, or is if it's the way the writing is. I don't know. It's, I think it's a combination of all. So. Honestly, I recorded this episode, I think, four times faster than I would have with the suit, which saves a lot of time and will save a lot of time editing and will make me get these episodes out faster. Because I think there is about five to six hours left and I think if I can keep, keep this up, uh, I might be able to get them out sooner. Or maybe I will get them out at the same pace because uh, after in next week I'm starting a new job with more hours, whoa, I can talk about that more in another video. But yeah, I will have less time making videos, so I think this would be a good way to record them. As I have less time, but I can do them faster and therefore get one Ad Astra uh, video up once a week. That would be, that would be cool. Um, but yeah. Let me know what you thought, <laughs> as I said in the comments. Uh, you saw the patrons before, they were here, the yellow. Thank you to all of them for supporting me. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, I love you. <laughs> so yeah, take care guys, and remember that you are loved and appreciated, and that you should be proud of who you are, because I want to see you in the next episode.
Whoa, what happened? This is the brightness now. 